Respected guest of honor, Professor Kamil Yalchin Polat, His Excellency Demir Shaheen, Commercial Counselor, Turkey, Professor Mohammed Omar, uh, VC RMU, Professor Bushra Khar, Professor Simandin, Gastroenterologist and Principal, Wa Medical College. Professor Masood Saab, all the gastroenterologists, surgeons, physicians from the Twin City, my dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, above all, our uh, great chairman, Dr. Ghulam Akbar Khan Niazi, I welcome you all on this very important CME activity on challenges in liver transplant. We at uh, Akbar Yazi Teaching Hospital feel pride in holding this CME activity. We'll start learning about what is happening around in our brother country, Turkey, from the uh, legendary professor, Volat, inshallah. About our college and the hospital, IMDC was inaugurated in 2007. Eight batches have so far graduated from here. Um, along with medical college, we have a dental college, a college of nursing, a department of 
medical technology, the Department of Physical Therapy, which is also going to change into college soon, inshallah. While taking up an undergraduate education, we have started embarking on postgraduate education as well. We have started fellowships with the College of Physician Surgeons. We have MDS programs in the Dental College. And we are going to, inshallah, add to uh, all the specialties uh, with time. Akbar Nazi Teaching Hospital is a 500 bed facility. We started only two and a half years ago. And we are now seeing 400 to 500 patients daily in the OPD. And in the inpatient department, we have around 150 patients uh, all the time. But this number is progressively increasing. This hospital caters for the local population, patients from Islamabad, patients from Mari, and also from all the way from Kashmir. We are situated on the main portal from Azad Kashmir into Islamabad, and we are getting more and more patients every day. We introduce Professor Kamil Yaljan Polat. He is presently acting as head of the Organ Transplant Center at um, Memorial Hospital in Istanbul. He is also uh, head of the Department of Surgery there. To his credit, he has so many scholarships, and he has, to his credit, outstanding service awards as well. He has published more than 100 articles in national journals and more than 28 research articles in international journals. He is at present Vice President of Turkish Hepato Pancreato Biliary Surgery Society. He is a member, board member of ONKKD, a member of American Society of Transplant Surgeons, and a member of International Hepato Pancreato Biliary Surgery. In addition to his education at Turkey, he got advanced laparoscopic surgery education from Mount Sinai University, uh, United States, and also from, uh, lepros for laparoscopic surgery from Germany. Uh, he also worked from 1991 to 92 in the Istanbul University of Transplant Unit. We are at this stage uh, doing bone marrow transplantation. We have a tra tra bone marrow transplant unit here. We have done about 25 transplants in the last two years. We are into organ transplant surgery. We are planning to start kidney transplant soon, inshallah. We are uh, at the initial stages of planning. And while Professor Pollard is here, we'll gain knowledge from him. I seek coordination from him for future with the Akbar Niazi Teaching Hospital in Islamabad Medical Dental College uh, to strengthen us in the field of pancreato, uh, hepato pancreatability surgery. And one day, inshallah, with your collaboration, sir, we can aim at, we can at least dream of having a transplant center here, inshallah. So I will hand over the podium to uh, Professor Polat kindly, sir. First of all, uh, I would like to thank to, uh, Mr. Akbar Niazi uh, for kind uh, invitation. So I am extremely happy to be here. This is the first time in Islamabad and fourth time in the Pakistan. So actually we are brothers, Pakistan and Turkey. As friendly two countries, we need com to communicate actually much more, I think. So uh, I will present you uh, only basic knowledge in the liver transplant area. We can say the replacement of the diseased, or, uh, diseased and the dysfunctional organ with healthy one. So liver transplant is gold standard treatment method in patients with end-stage liver. This is the routine therapy in end-stage liver disease. So what's the source of the organs? So we need actually uh, organs, you know, uh, human organs. 
now. So there are two sorts of the organs. This is one, one of them is uh, cadaveric and the other one is living donor. So when we look at the liver transplant historical background, first liver transplant was performed with Dr. Starzl in 1967. That time, the first case was pediatric case. The, he was three years old and he biliary atresia. So we, with fortune of the amazing liver anatomy, innovative surgical techniques were introduced. You know, we know every were in the liver actually. So this led to surgeons for reduced size, split, and live donor liver transplantation. So what's the organ, donor organ consideration? Donor shortage is the main limiting factor in liver transplant also, the other kidney something. So long waiting times causes high waiting list mortality. This is the every country problem actually. Advancement of the surgical innovation to expand the donor pool has declined the waiting list mortality, such as reduced size, splits, and eventually live donor liver transplant are life saving for the patients. In Turkey, last year, we have a totally 20,600 waiting list in the patients. In liver, 2,100 something. So we have also a donation problem in the Turkey. We are very low donation rate. Seven something uh, per million population in last year. So when we look at the transplant activation in the world, Turkey actually is growing actually rising star in the world. So last year, we performed about 5,000 transplant procedures. And liver, 1,600 <coughs> liver transplant we performed. So live and donor liver transplant activity in nine, 2016, Turkey, one of number one of the world, Turkey in the world. I mean, living donor liver transplantation. One thousand liver living donor liver transplantation were performed in Turkey that time. So also Pakistan is growing. That time, one hundred seventy-six living donor liver transplantation in Pakistan. So liver transplant. When we look at the liver transplant and cadaveric global and Europe and Turkey, you know, globally, this is nothing, uh, 34,000 uh, cadaveric liver transplant were performed in the world totally. In Turkey, only 562 cadaveric liver transplant were performed. That's a very low number actually for Turkey in terms of the cadaveric liver transplant. So if you look at the, uh, when we look at the living donor liver transplantation, we have actually good number because of the, we have donation problem. Totally, I mean globally in the world, 2016, uh, 2,300 living donor were performed in the world. In Turkey, 1,000 liver, living donor liver transplantation were performed in Turkey. That's a big number, actually. We have a huge experience in terms of the living donor liver transplantation. Health report for pediatric liver transplant, Turkey was the second busiest country in the world. However, when adjust the country population, I mean per million population, Turkey seems to be the busiest country in the world. That time, 
215 pediatric liver transplant were performed in Turkey. This is the actually big number, big, huge, and experience. The uh, uh, 40 liver transplant, pediatric liver transplant, were performed on our centers. So this is Bosnian people, I mean pediatric. He, he had a cystic fibrosis. He get the uh, liver uh, her, from her mom, his, his mom. So uh, USA numbers, they are doing mostly cadaveric uh, do, uh, liver transplant. Uh, I mean, years, uh, per year, 7,000 something. So living donor, very low number they have. There are two countries in the world, big experience in terms of the liver, living donor liver transplantation, Turkey and South Korea. So what's the indication of the liver transplantation? There are four main reasons uh, to the liver transplant. You know, chronic liver disease, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, autoimmune hepatitis, you know, uh, PBC or, you know, a lot of page, uh, disease there are. Hepatocellular carcinoma, the second one, is very important and special area. And acute liver failure and metabolic and genetic disease. Intrahepatic cholestasis, I mean, a lot of uh, disease uh, for indication liver transplant in pediatric cases. So what's the, you know, uh, how can we do the evaluation? The patient is on the end stage liver disease. There are some criteria, child system, you know, state system, and MELT system, something. But mostly we are using the MELT score system or MELT sodium system. There are some formula, as you know. So this is important thing, yes, it's very, very important. To, we, have, we know patient is whether decompensate cirrhosis or compensate cirrhosis. You know, MELT score is the prognostic score system, actually. If the, this is the natural uh, uh, course of the decompensate cirrhosis patient's life. If we don't do uh, transplant, don't do the transplant in decompensate cirrhosis, pay, we, will, we will lose the patient uh, in two years, most of them, 70 to 72 uh, uh, percent actually. Decom decompensate cirrhosis is need to liver transplant actually. So this is natural course of the cirrhotic patients. They're gonna live in two years. So this is, junction is the, uh, showing us the compensation and decompensation. If we do the uh, liver transplant uh, compensate patient, we have get some risk about the patients. So uh, the most country, uh, the best count, best centers actually, there are some, you know, morbidity and mortality rate. So one year survival, uh, uh, eighty five percent in best centers in the world. That means we will, we may lose the. 15 patient, 15 percent patients lost. So we have to do uh, liver transplant after decompensation. If we do the decompensation liver transplant, we get a lot of benefit. So <coughs> ASLD guidelines say that if the patient has MELT score 10 or 10 plus and child score 7 or 7 plus, and patient has a complication of cirrhosis, ascites, varicell bleeding, something, you should refer the patient transplant centers. What's the complication of the cirrhosis, varicell bleeding, ascites, encephalopathy, HCC, and hepatorenal syndrome? The patient must be considered for liver transplantation. So what's the contraindication of to, uh, for the liver transplantation? Cardiopulmonary disease, which cannot be treated. P 
patient with extra hepatic tumor, sometimes it's some, uh, for example, colonic or pancreatic or kidney tumor, in five years of treatment, active alcohol using. If the patient using actively alcohol, we cannot do the transplant that patients. So active infection and sepsis, we cannot use, uh, do the liver transplantation. So this is the liver. You know, this is the uh, uh, end stage of the liver, and maybe etiologic agent is the NASH, metabolic disease. So we put the, you know, cadaveric liver uh, patient. Uh, this patient is actually, uh, when she came to our hospital, she has been uh, extubated, uh, intubated. Uh, so she pay at, after the transplant, she's smiling. That's the liver transplantation. <clears throat> I mean, white and black. So snowboarder Chris Clark's unbelievable came back to, fr from the liver transplant surgery. He won the bronze medal in the parallel giant salon. That's the liver transplant result, actually. So another uh, reason of the li for liver transplant, acute liver failure. What's the acute liver failure definition? Occurring encephalopathy in a patient who has healthy liver in six weeks after starting symptoms, occurring encephalopathy in a patient even who has a liver disease in two weeks after starting, starting icterus. So another definition, you know, a lot of definition. If the ANR uh, more than <coughs> higher than uh, 1.5 and encephalopathy or INR higher than two, regardless of encephalopathy, we can go liver transplant actually. But we have uh, some uh, criteria to patients, whether to patients go to transplant or not. King's College we are using mostly, but experience is important. We have to <coughs> evaluate the patient, patient basis actually, not just the numbers. <coughs> we have a, a lot of experience. We are just doing the patient evaluation in the bed, actually. If the uh, acute liver failure actually, a life treating and rare medical death arises from passive ac acute hepatic necrosis, that means <coughs> we should go to the liver transplant. This is our patients. <coughs> One and a half years ago, <coughs> she, when she came to our hospital, she had been extubated. In 10, year, 10 hours, we, will get the re we had the ready to transplant, living donor liver transplantation he had, she had. After six months, <coughs> she gave the gift to us. This is the liver transplant's result, actually. So another thing is the HCC. Big issue, actually. We are not using, we are not doing the liver transplant every HCC pages. We have, <coughs> we should use some criteria to get the good and better result, actually. <coughs> tumor volume is important, size and neoplastic nodule is important. Tumor differentiation, the tumor shouldn't be the uh, poor differentiations. So vascular immersion is important. Alpha photoprotein, routinely we are checking it before the operation, before the decision, I mean, uh, liver transplantation. <coughs> if the uh, FDG positive, that means <coughs> bad uh, prognosis. Recurrent is, rate is very high. So in terms of the size, there are a lot of <coughs> criteria. First one is the Milan criteria. Mostly uh, surgeons using the Milan criteria. Milan criteria result is very good actually. Tumor size should be maximum five centimeters. And for uh, five years survival, at least 70% if the patient is in the Milan criteria. And beyond Milan, and the PAT, PAT I mean FTG negative and FTG positive. If the patient FTG negative and Milan in, 
very good result actually and close to result each other. But Milan, P, 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 FTG positive number is, uh, result is, the, I mean, uh, very bad. The other side is the USF, yani University of California score systems. You know, PET positive and PET negative is important. USF criteria, the, in the USF criteria, tumor should be less than 8 centimeters total tumor size. So, very extended criteria, Toronto criteria. We are not using the tor Toronto criteria. Tumor doesn't matter tumor size, doesn't matter nodule size. No vascular invasion, the HCC limited only should be the liver, and no poor differentiated. This is the Toronto criteria. So when we look at the criteria's uh, results, post transplant survival, in Milan criteria, <coughs> four-year uh, survival, 85%. UCSF criteria, 80% five-year survival. But extended criteria, Toronto criteria, actually is acceptable. <coughs> five-year survival, 68%. Liver is size, not doesn't matter size, doesn't matter uh, no, no, no number something. But important thing is that if there is, there should be extra hepatic, there shouldn't be extra hepatic metastasis. This is only big, uh, major criteria actually. So even if the patient has early HCC, patients, can we do the liver transplant? They reported that yes. Result is forwarded the liver transplantation, even if the patient has <coughs> early HCC. We are doing the HCC therapy, you know, resection and liver transplant. Which one is the better? The result is uh, forward the liver transplantation. This is meta-analysis. So we are using the HCC patients, uh, evaluating the HCC, we are using the body fear Barcelona staging system and treatment. Some patients going to goes to liver transplant and some patient goes to uh, ablation and some patient goes to liver resection. So in our series, 165 patients, overall survival in our center's results, five year survival, 78.60, uh, six uh, percent. So immune suppression is important, as you know. After the liver transplant, we have to manage very carefully immune suppression. Uh, some side effects, we are, use, we are uh, working on a lot of uh, side effects, uh, uh, you know, complication, immune suppressive complication. But it is very, very important thing in the liver transplant <coughs> area. So what's the living donor liver transplantation? We are doing mostly living donor liver transplantation. A healthy adult is donating a part of his or her liver to suitable patient and recipient. For donor, we have uh, some morbidity. This is the you know, uh, uh, transplant uh, uh, report. Morbidity all over the world, actually, 21% uh, mortality. 0.5. Donor safety is important. I mean, donor safety is essential in the living donor liver transplantation. It's very, very important. So what surgeon knows, wants to know donor liver? Liver volume, liver analysis, any hepatocytosis or not, arterial anatomy, portal vein anatomy, hepatic venous anatomy, bilateral anatomy. We have to check couple of times before the operation. This is healthy person. We are checking everything and we are saying to the patient, you are normally. So let's go to the operation. That's the contrast actually. You know, we are checking everything is normal, lab and other things. Every organ is normal. So we are saying to the patient, 
let's go operation. This is a very contrasting, actually. We have to careful. We have to be careful in donor side, actually. So analyze of the liver volume. We we are using the you know graft volume should be enough and educate for patients. Volume ratio, recipient volume, gra graft ratio volume uh, should be f one percent and shouldn't be under the 0.8 percent. But sometimes we are doing 0.6 percent. Residual volume is important. It shouldn't be less than 30 percent. Hepatosteatosis is important. A cadaveric uh, liver transplant less than you know uh, 30 percent should be. But we are not using fatty liver in liver donor liver transplantation. For liver donor, it should be less than 10 percent. I mean fatty person, yeah, fatty uh, ratio. Vascular anatomy is important. We have to know arterial anatomy and donor site and portal vein anatomy and bile duct anatomy and hepatic vein anatomy. We have to know actually. So this is a volumetric system. This is uh, arterial system. For example, right hepatic artery coming from the SMA and the other is normal. This is the portal vein anatomy. This is hepatic vein anatomy. Hepatic vein anatomy, middle hepatic vein anatomy is very, very important. You know why? Uh, we are using extremely, uh, mostly right lobe. Right lobe means, you know, four, five, segment five, segment eight, segment six, and segment seven. We are lifting the middle hepatic vein on the left side and donor side. So, Segment five and segment seven drainage the middle hepatic vein. We are cutting hepatic segment five uh, vein and segment five uh, vein. This is very, very important. We know anatomically where is the middle hepatic vein. If we take the middle hepatic vein right side, get some risk in the donor side. Biliary anatomy also is very important. We are, before the operation, we're checking routinely MRCP, and during the operation, peripotive cholangium, routinely we are doing. So this is the MRCP. So uh, can you see the color differentiation? Uh, this is the dark, and this is the little bit normal. So how can we uh, uh, evaluate the, this is the right, Lobe, this is the left lobe. Just, just a simple thing. We are uh, tying the right portal vein and the right hepatic artery. There is no blood flow in the right side. This is the color. This is the, you know, cattle line actually, left side. <coughs> this is the cattle line, right and left lobe differentiation. We are using the uh, CUSA bloodless operation. This is also, we're share, after that we're sharing the parenchyma, this is also hilum and bile duct, uh, yellow one and portal system. We can close the, that patient, actually, if any problem, recipient side. Liver is working, both sides. <coughs> we didn't cut <coughs> hilum before, yet, actually. So after the, taking the right lobe out, this is the remnant liver. So in pediatric cases, you know, pediatrics, the very small uh, babies, we are doing the liver transplant. After the uh, parenchyma uh, sharing, we are reducing size inside to, inside to reducing size liver resection. This is the left lateral segment in the liver. So this is the organ selection. This is my hands. So this is pediatric cadaveric liver. This is reduced size liver. We are taking the left lateral segment and then 
we are getting reduced and the split donor cadaveric we are uh, after the <coughs> cadaveric donor uh, take the liver out and we are sharing the liver the uh, small one is for children the other one is uh, adult patients also reduced size liver you know very very small liver this is the portal vein in the left side This is donor selection, actually. So sometimes we need some technical uh, reconstruction. This is two hepatic vein away from the, each other. Can we use this the liver for uh, uh, recipient? Yes, we can do that. But some reconstruction we are doing, this is the color techniques. We call it, say, color techniques, color. Only one hole is the left, left hepatic vein. We can use that one. So this is the color techniques. This is our techniques, actually. After the reperfusion, this is the portal vein, the pediatric patients, and hepatic artery, and inter, uh, inferior vena cava. So split liver is a good thing actually, but technically a uh, very excellent, excellent operation. One cadaveric liver, two recipients. That's the reason, uh, you know, uh, techniques. This is our patients, the second transplant. <coughs> she had <coughs> two years, uh, five years ago, first transplant he get. After the two years, first transplant, uh, she had a uh, chronic rejection and we use it small one for her and post up day 10 she's she was eating very well so this is also <coughs> a pediatric donation this is smallest one in the world sharing cadaveric liver. Two months ago, we split it. Totally 276 grams liver. Two years old, 12 kilograms baby. Cadaveric donor. We use it to baby this part. This is the right side after the operation. You know, smiling. <laughs> This is the left side, this is another baby. Five kilograms, two babies. Technical challenges. Post-operative care is important. We are checking the liver function tests and patient general condition. Uh, you know, everything, early period, early uh, post-operative period, I mean, one week is very, very important uh, to evaluate the liver function. We have to follow the patient carefully after the operation. We have some post-operative complication, primary non-function, hepatic arterial thrombosis, portal vein thrombosis, IV hepatic vein thrombosis, bleeding, hemoperitoneum, biliar complication. Most of the complication rate in the, we have biliar complication in the living donor liver transplantation. Living donor, uh, I mean, biliar complication, Achille tendon, is the living donor liver transplantation. If someone solved the bile duct problem in living donor liver transplantation, maybe he will get the Nobel Prize, I think. Retransplantation, retransplantation we need sometimes. Early period, primary non-function, hepatic arterial thrombosis, uh, or you know, uh, the late period, Chronic rejection is uh, the uh, uh, most uh, reason of the liver tra uh, retransplantation. Very hard cases, very difficult and tough cases actually. This is, you know, chronic rejection. Our patients, you know, not a normal anatomy. He had a normal, not normal anatomy, portal vein and hepatic artery. This is a pediatric case. 
the patient three years ago, he, she get the uh, living donor liver transplantation, graft from the, her mother, but after six uh, uh, f uh, months, first liver transplant, he get, she get chronic rejection, yellow baby. And after the liver transplant, you know, second transplant, she's a good, she's doing fine, actually. So hepatic arterial thrombosis, many uh, main problem in the living donor liver transplantation. In our series, 2.5% hepatic arterial thrombosis we have. Sometimes we are using the uh, sufferers when directly, you know, your to, this is, Saffron's van directly to <coughs> hepatic artery. What's the, our experience? What's our results? We are growing <coughs> by years. <coughs> Last year we performed 166. So totally, now actually it's seven years, we performed 90, 998 liver transplant. Now actually 1,022, last one. So adult, 872. Pediatric, 126. We started our liver pediatric program three and a half years ago. So what kind of liver transplant we are doing? Retransplantation, 12. Period liver exchange due to volume and blood type incompatibility, one case. Very complex operation. So uh, reduced size graft we are using, split graft and retransplantation for pediatric also. So etiology, we mostly we are uh, etiologic agent is the hepatitis B in Turkey and hepatitis C, all of you know cryptogenic autoimmune. We have a lot of uh, etiologic reason. Main operation time. Donor side, uh, two, uh, three, four, uh, three point five hours. In recipient side, surgery eight hours. <coughs> blood, mean blood transfusion one point seven units. No blood transfusion, you know, forty uh, percent. We are we are doing the liver transplant bloodless actually. So this is the our youngest patient, two, three months and four kilograms. This is my hands. <laughs> That's it. And we use it hyperreduced size liver uh, graft. So postoperative complication on the donor side. It's very important. Alhamdulillah, shukur. We didn't lose the patient donor, donor, uh, donor patient. Bleeding, bilioma, pulmonary embolism. But when we look at the percent, percentage, uh, mostly, you know, uh, Big number is 1.6. It's acceptable donor complication. But we have two uh, major uh, complications, sepsis and portal vein thrombosis. Two patients. But we didn't lose, sh shukur. Alhamdulillah. This is the uh, post on post-op day seven, uh, donor get a ascites. Suddenly, we check the uh, CT scan the portal vein thrombosis. This is very bad news actually for, that was very news uh, for, bad, uh, for me actually. In one week, I sleep only five hours for one week. This is a donor, you know. We couldn't, you know, I mean, we lost the patient. This is after the operation, that's uh, important. So donor is, Still good, no problem. This is the biliary systole. You know, we are using some biliary problem in the donor side also. Biliary leakage. We are using mostly ERCP, but sometimes we need PTC. But both of them is failed in this case. But the same uh, simultaneous PTC and ERCP, we, we get the problem. We, we solve the problem. This is the noble leakage after stenting, and follow up the third month is no problem. So portal vein thrombosis is very important. 15.5% uh, uh, 
we, we are doing the portal vein thrombosis patients. This is another uh, anomaly, uh, portal vein branches coming from left side. This is very, uh, you know, challenging operation actually. So we put the uh, saphenous graft and after the reperfusion, this is the uh, graft is working. So this is the, the another anatomy, tip two, uh, three, uh, three bifurcation in the portal vein. Can we use this the patient's uh, right side to graft? Yes, we can do, but we have two hole in the right side. We solve the problem. This is the my techniques. We are, uh, I use the you know, cadaveric uh, iliac graft. This is one hole after the reconstruction. So this is portal vein thrombosis. There was no portal vein, the area. Shrinking liver, ascites, but there is no portal, portal uh, blood flow. Completely thrombosis. Can we do that? Yes, we can do that. This is portal vein, no blood flow. After the thrombectomy, and put the liver patient in, it was working well. So this is the big mama. This is uh, alveolar echinococcosis. Alveolar, you know the alveolar echinococcosis? Echinococcus multilocularis agent. So when a KY was invasive, we, put, uh, we take the liver out and put the liver uh, cadaveric aorta, uh, like a KY, and put the, you know, a right lobe graft patient in. So this is another problem, small for size syndrome. That means graft small for the dead adults. I mean, we are using about, I said before, one person. You know, if the patient is 70 kilograms, the patient needs at least 560 gram livers, okay? 0.8 is acceptable, but sometimes I am doing 0.7, 0.6, but some with some regulation. Somatostatin using, and splenic artery ligation, and splenectomy, we are using and take the uh, portal vein uh, pressure down, actually. So this is another case. This is the third case in the Turkey. Third liver transplant he had. He's, she's still alive and without any complications. This is complication of the pediatric patient. First 100 case. Uh, survival actually uh, to 321 days, 90%. Uh, uh, arterial complication is acceptable by leakage and abdominal bleeding, there is no uh, high uh, complication rate. So this is the uh, uh, adult patients, postoperative bleeding and relapotrum, ileus and intestinal perforation. Biliar complication is very important. We are, biliar complication rate is 18.5% uh, uh, because of the uh, living donor using. So we are solving the problem, PTC or ERCP or open surgery. Communication with eyes, you know, uh, yellow baby after the operation, you know, white baby. In terms of the life, liver transplant is white and black. So this is our champion. The baby, uh, in one week, he had five surgery, two transplants. Portal vein thrombosis, thrombectomy, 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 and living donor liver, the first living donor liver transplant he had. One week after, we put the cadaveric uh, uh, graft. He's smiling, he's alive still. So totally, I mean, our results, mortality, I mean, patient survival, mean follow-up time, 867 days, 
9100.9. So transplant is the mosaic actually. We need every color and tone of the every color. Means gastroenterologist, means social workers, means surgeon, means ICU workers, means nurse, means political guys, means media guys, everybody have the transplant mosaic. This is our hospital, Bahçelevliar Memorial Hospital. And this is main gate and the lobby. Thank you for your attention. So we have a good rule actually in the Turkey. A health minister is covering everything. They are following the all centers very closely in terms of results, in terms of complication, in terms of legal, they are doing legal or not. So we are, we are also ethical committee. After the fourth relatives, we need the actually ethical committee reports. Ethical committee is uh, working very hard, actually. I think we have good uh, legal uh, 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 things better than Europe. Does the donor have to be a relative all the time? Does the living donor? Living have, donor. If you have a living donor transplant. Yes. The living donor has to be a relative of the patient in your team or not? Yes. It has to be there. Yes. First of all, thank you very much for this very informative talk. And uh, we took uh, so many things from it. My question is uh, related to the cadaver transplants. Do you, have, do you face any problems in getting uh, cadavers or are there any laws which are controlling the cadaver transplant over there? Because what I saw was the number of cadaver transplants quite less. Yes. And it had to be. Yes. But uh, you know, do do you have any uh, uh, prior registry, or uh, do you have a mechanism where uh, yeah. the people they they just get registered for the you know, cadaver uh, transplant? You uh, know, get the cadaver donor rate higher, higher. We will uh, work on. We have to work on the ICU actually. Right? Intensive care unit is important. So they should, they have to uh, give us, uh, we have a brain that, you know, this is very, very important things. But, you know, Islam is, doesn't, you know, uh, saying, okay, you shouldn't give that one. No problem for, in terms of the religion. But we have to work on uh, a lot of uh, things, the, their issue. So I have a couple of social uh, 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 activity. I mean, football players and uh, activists, something. We have to get a donation every day. I mean, say something in med by the media or a lot of things. We have to use that one. How about if there are, say, uh, road traffic accidents? And, uh, traffic accidents? Uh, yeah, road yeah. traffic accidents, and the patients, they come to the hospital. And uh, do you have a mechanism to just get the consent of uh, you know, different transplant? We have just from taken the, the organ only in the you know, brain death patients in the ICU. So relatives 
should be say yes, okay. Uh, patience in the life, during the life, uh, before the death, yeah, get the you know donation. So you know uh, we are working on a lot that issue actually. A lot of. Do you have any program that uh, uh, inform or educate people from the? Yes, we are from, doing. From, we are doing also. From Health school. minister is doing a lot of work and a lot of activity they are doing. Also, we are doing, you know. Okay. But if we do the living donor liver transplantation too much, oh. okay, so you are going the uh, donors, uh, my cadaveric donor relatives, can you give some to your pay? No. The relatives, patients, relatives, they, they, maybe they have a patient relatives. Go and that's take the organs. You know? That's the, you know, contrasting action. Thank you. You're welcome. Assalamu alaikum, sir. I am, I am Dr. Sadia Yasser. Uh, my question is, sir, how is the mentality of your people, Turkish people? Do you face any problems regarding the, uh, you know, um, coming to your health facility? Do they take late decisions or any delay in decisions any for problem? their patients? I'm asking about the relatives, the family members relatives. of the patient. Yes. Do you face any problems about them in delaying any decision for the transplant or do you, um, do you face any problem in convincing them that your patient is at stake and it's very necessary for him or her, for no. him or her to uh, undergo this surgery and uh, you have to plan like things like that? Yeah, we can manage the we can manage the, that problem actually. We, we cannot the, the face the, that problem. So they have proper awareness and knowledge, yes. and yes. they are happy to undergo yes. such kind of. There are sometimes, you know, uh, every donors, you know, uh, will evaluate the physio, uh, psych psychiatrist. Okay, he asking everything. Uh, uh, psych psychiatrist saying everything. Asking everything, checking everything, okay. any press and something. Just, you know, uh, this is uh, very important. Not okay. the pushing the yet the donor role. Okay, because my, my mom died recently and she was a dialysis patient, but it took me two years to convince her that you should undergo dialysis. This was her thinking that no, yeah, I know. whenever I go for dialysis, I will die. Yeah, the same so. problem in the, your country and our country. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm Dr. Mumtaz Ekin Yazi. I'm HPB surgeon at Pakistan Institute of Medical Science, Islamabad. So, uh, um, you have quite a lot of experience, so I was wondering that whether you have experience of uh, Domino's transplant. Domino's? Domino's. I didn't yet. No, not yet. No. And second. Li liver transplant. Yep. But this is, this is another big problem, actually. And uh, liver transplant. And second. Back to back. What is your technique in uh, cadaveric program, whether you use uh, piggyback technique or uh, IVC cross-section, uh, cross-clamping or uh, vero I clamping? mean, you're saying, asking the living donor? No, no, cadaveric program. Cadaveric? Every kind of, every, every technique we are, we are using, you know, we have a lot of patients, you know, pa it depends on the patient's situation during the operation. Sometimes we have total clampage we need, sometimes piggyback techniques. But it's the regularly patients, we are doing the uh, piggyback techniques. Piggyback? Yeah, yeah. P we, we, I prefer the uh, piggyback techniques. My question is, uh, what is the rejection rate in these patients and how long you wait for the second or third transplant and uh, how long you follow these patients for rejection? Rejection? For rejection. In one year after the uh, liver transplant, after liver about 15% we have a rejection rate, okay? So we are following the patients, you know, uh, response, response, uh, response therapy. Uh, we are using the uh, cortisone, you know, uh, five, one milligram, one gram, three days, and 500 grams, uh, milligrams, three days, and uh, down, down, we are using the uh, cortisone. So I think one week is enough for the get the response, but sometimes, especially autoimmune hepatitis, patients with patients autoimmune hepatitis, you know, we are using the triple uh, therapy, uh, Silcept and cortisone and Prograf. Routinely, we are doing only cortisone and Prograf. First, 
six months and only one uh, therapy, monotherapy uh, with the uh, prograf, I mean tecrolimus, we are using. And, uh, follow them for how, how many, I mean, how, how frequent you follow them? How, how lifetime. 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 <laughs> we and have what, to do that. What, what is the, uh, I mean, rejection after, rate after two years or three years? Yeah, we are, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, one year after post-operative, first year is very, very important. You know at that one. After one year, the uh, rate is going down. Uh, thank you very much for your You're excellent right. presentation. I am Dr. Mantas, professor of urology in this hospital. Urology. And we would like to welcome you in Pakistan. We have many friends in uh, Turkey, including Istanbul. Thank you. Particularly to name Professor Kemal Sarika, who is the Kemal Sarika is the chairman of European Association of Urology and ULUS, and he also visited here in Islamabad two times. I have also experience of kidney transplantation. Kidney and, transplantation. Yes, and minimally invasive surgery uh, yes. in urology. Uh, I have a few questions. What is the essential prerequisite for uh, a recipient and the donor? For example, like in renal transplantation, the, there should be ABO compatibility and negative cross match. What's the difference in uh, liver transplantation? ABO compatibility is important for first. ABO compatibility. Yes, yes, we are using. It is also essential. Yes. Okay. And negative cross match also? Yes. Yes. Absolutely yes. Okay. <laughs> and uh, a relative contraindication in renal transplantation is if uh, the recipient is uh, hepatitis B positive or anti-HCV positive. But in, what about in liver transplantation? No, we are not using liver transplantation? Yes. No. You know, uh, sometimes uh, we, are, we are not using the hepatitis B positive donor okay. for liver uh, transplantation. We are not using okay. electively, I mean living donor. Okay. But sometimes, you know, we can use that one especially acute liver failure, okay? We can use that one, hepatitis B antigen positive donor, we can use cadaveric donor, we can use the hepatitis B patients. If the patient in my center, actually, acute liver failures, okay? So uh, in the renal transplant, we can use that one. If the patient has a hepatitis B, donor is hepatitis B, you, we can use the uh, okay. This so, that kidneys, yes. So, no so you can use it. Uh, yes, but no. checking what checking liver uh, liver function tests and HBV uh, D uh, DNA PCR we are doing also. They are getting some uh, viral uh, antiviral uh, therapy. But you know, B positive people de uh, without delta positive, without delta. Okay, we are using hepatitis B donor to. Hepatitis B recipient. Okay. Yes. And what is the average cost of uh, this immunosuppression in uh, in the post-operative period? Post-operative one years? Uh, post-operative period. I mean, you're cost, you're asking the, uh, the cost kidney? of the, no no in liver, liver the cost of immunosuppression medicine. I didn't calculate uh, that okay. quickly. <laughs> I know, I have no about, idea. About yes. 500 US dollars? Something, some, yes. Something like yeah, that. I guess. And the last question is, what is the uh, percentage of graft and recipient survival, for example, five years or 10 years? After five years? Yes, or 10 years. Graft uh, survival, liver graft survival, and patient survival rate. So, uh, I calculate the, you know, uh, mean average, yes. 836 uh, uh, days, 91.9 percent. Five years, about uh, uh, 78 percent, okay. okay? One year, more than 90 percent. Okay. The three years, about 88 percent, okay, in our cent uh, okay. centers. I mean. Thank you. Yes. Dr. Sayed, and I am working as, uh, as a pathologist, 
Uh, my question is that uh, hepatocellular carcinoma is usually carcinoma a, hepatocellular carcinoma yes usually yeah. has a bad prognosis in your experience uh, regarding liver transplant in these patients how many what is the rate of recurrence of the tumor in our series total you know i said uh, i showed the, uh, our results general uh, one five year survival 80 uh, 78 percent uh, overall survival, not the disease-free survival. But if the, I mean, uh, AFP level is high, more than uh, 500, recurrence rate is the high in our series also. So tumor microvascular invasion, if the patient has a microvascular invasion, recurrence rate is high. But totally, recurrence rates are actually 25 to uh, 30 percent in three or five years between. You know, we are someone, actually, Toronto criteria, as you showed before, five years survival, 68%, five years. That's the extended, very extended criteria. You know, five years survival in the HCC, 86% five years survival. How is the pancreatic tumors uh, I mean, uh, five years survival, 10 or 15, you know. We can use actually uh, more criteria, extended criteria, if the patient is available, okay? Sir, I'm Dr. Ahmed Raza, working in um, general surgery department here in ANTH. Uh, first, first of all, I would like to congratulate on a wonderful presentation and your achievement um, doing about 1,000 liver transplants. <clears throat> My question is, uh, a technical, uh, you talked about the uh, biggest level of uh, complications are biliary complications, 184 you mentioned in your presentation. So my question is, um, uh, what percentage of uh, these complications are dealt by intervention radiologists and endoscopists? And uh, I mean, and, uh, uh, let me put it another way, what percentage of patients are reopened to manage these complications? Very, very low, actually. Uh, you know, I think, uh, one person, something, well, less than one person, we, we get the open the surgery, open the surgery. They are doing both, I mean, radiologist, interventional radiologist and yeah, gastroenterologist solve the problem, can solve the problem, mostly. How do you calculate the stetosis uh, in a living donor? Do you rely on the CT only or you take biopsy? Yeah, CT first, without contrast, uh, Hansfield unit, you just uh, eight or ten point they get the uh, samples to calculate. So if any, uh, I mean, HU level less than five, uh, 55, we will take the biopsy. You do take biopsy? Yeah, sometimes, we are, we are, uh, sometimes we are taking the biopsy, right side or left side, doesn't matter. And how much uh, percentage of status is acceptable for a living donor transplant? Acceptable? For a transplant, for a donor. <laughs> In terms of what? How much percentage of stetosis is accepted yeah, as a donor? You know, uh, 50, more than 55 HU is acceptable. No, I'm asking about how much percent of, like, is it 5% stetosis, 10% stetosis, do you accept for uh, as a donor? It depends on the donor, avail donor availability. If there is no uh, one more, you know, uh, uh, donor, we have to some forces, you know. Less than 10 is okay for me. Less than 10, uh, fatty, okay. But I have to check with the biopsy, you know, uh, any steatohepatitis, there is no, or, 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 uh, there is a steatohepatitis uh, or not. This is very important. Not just the fatty, hepatitis. Steatohepatitis is very important. and. You know, uh, inflammation is important. If the patient less than uh, 55 HU, we are getting biopsy and uh, very carefully evaluation with the pathologist. So another thing is the fatty patient, fatty liver. So uh, remnant liver is important. So 29 or uh, 30 percent remnant is getting upset, you know. So right side also less than 0.8 percent, 
we can we cannot use that one thank you so much you're welcome uh, first of all, I'm thankful to everybody who's been here. Um, it's not easy nowadays with all the containers and checkpoints to cross to come all the way here. We are very appreciative of everybody who took the time to come here. I'm very much grateful to Professor Pulat for his time and being here. I remember the first time we met and I was wondering when you're going to mention the champion and it was, I was happy to see his picture at the end because I had the privilege of meeting the champion during our visit in, uh, I believe, the Sicily Hospital that was. Atesha, yes, Atesha Hospital we, we visited. And one of the things I noticed was when he was talking about the com eye communication, was whenever I went into a room with uh, Professor Pilat, the way especially the pediatric patient responded to his presence, I think that's a memory which I brought back with, from, from the visit was his relationship with his pediatric patients and how they were responding uh, when they saw him walk into the room. And it was automatic, very, very close relationship. And, 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 and there was a bond between the patient and the doctor. And I was very much impressed on it. So we are very grateful to have you here. Um, Hajim, welcome the first time to Islamabad also. I know you've been coming to Karachi and going back. So finally, we were able to bring you to Islamabad. And we hope that you will keep on coming back here. Um, I would like to um, mention here that this program is a part of a series, uh, Akbar Niazi Teaching Hospital in Islamabad Medical and Dental College. What we are working on is creating what we call the corridor of care and knowledge. Um, it is working with uh, hospitals like Memorial in, uh, in Turkey. We want to create one thing is extended patient care uh, to, to the patients and not only ANTH patients but across the uh, medical community and to make to help them have access to the world class uh, care which is being provided in, in, in the hospital chains like Memorial in, in Turkey. Uh, we are not going to only restrict this to liver. We will be inshallah expanding these to other specialties, uh, other transplants. Uh, we are working on uh, bone marrow transplant and expanding that in the future. Cosmetology, oncology, IVF. Uh, I believe radiotherapy also, is something we discussed. And we are going to be expanding this corridor of care and knowledge. We are very grateful to have uh, um, His Excellency Mr. Devan Shaheen here, uh, the commercial consular from Turkish Embassy. Uh, he's been very supportive of the whole program. He's been from day one. He's been working with us and giving us the connections and the contact over here. Uh, everybody is very important, but there are a few people I really like to thank, uh, um, especially here. Um, starting with Dr. Umar, the Vice Chancellor of uh, Rawalpindi Medical University. Uh, thank you very much. He took his time. We know how busy he, uh, he is. We are also very grateful to Dr. Wasimuddin, Principal Wa Medical College. Uh, given that the distance and everything, we are very grateful that you take time today on your uh, off day to be here with us. We are very privileged to have you here. We are also very much thankful to Dr. Uh, Masood uh, Sadiqi Saab, the Pakistan Society of Study of uh, Liver Diseases. So it's an honor to have you at ANTH and we are looking forward to collaborating with the society more and see how we can contribute to the society and be part, uh, active uh, participant of that. Uh, I will also like to thank Dr. Bushra Khar and also Dr. Salim Qureshi. Uh, I see him here, the head of the Department of Care Al Hospital. And uh, Dr. Mumtaz Niazi, welcome. Welcome, first time to be, have him here. Uh, he's from Pakistan Institute of Medical uh, Sciences, which is the largest public sector hospital in, in Islamabad area. Uh, I would like to thank our own faculty. Uh, they, they took time to be here. Uh, his uh, um, honorable dean, uh, the principal and uh, medical college, principal dental college, director, Dr. Khurshid and everybody. And thank you very much. And I believe the food is ready. Uh, we just one more thing. Uh, there is a token of appreciation we would like you to take with you. I would request the chairman, uh, Islamabad Medical and Dental College and Akbar Niazi Teaching Hospital to present this token uh, uh, memorabilia to uh, the Professor Pulat.